Topical questions. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, could he give a formal update on the future of the Magla Conception College in Derry? Um, I understand that CCMS are proposing to publish a development proposal which would see the closure of the Immaculate Conception uh, in Derry, but to date no such proposal has been published. If one, such a proposal is published, it will be, go out to a two-month consultation period, during which time uh, members of the House, members of the public and interested parties will be able to um, enter a consultation period with myself and put across their views in relation to that matter. Pat Ramsey. I thank the Minister for, for his response, but would he understand the absolute worry, concern and anger within the parents of pupils attending the school amongst the staff that this particular only Catholic post-primary school on the water side has been starved of funding and any form of modernisation for decades now? And will the Minister reflecting that in terms of going forward, that their opinions are so important, and to make sure that there is the most effective consultation with everyone and the community leaders in that area? I am legally obliged to carry out an effective consultation with everyone in that area. Uh, and the reason why I brought earlier planning into place is that we do not see scenarios where the term which has been used to me before, that schools are allowed to die on the vine. But we want to see schools in a planned schools estate moving forward, providing excellent education to our young people moving into the future. So I am not in a position to talk about what happened in the past, but I, I will be in a position about what will happen in the future. And whatever the decision I come to, if I am involved in the decision-making process and if a development proposal is published, will be about ensuring that all of the young people in that area have access to high-quality uh, educational services. Question number two, Mr. Hussey is not in his place. Adrian McQuillan. Mr. McQuillan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In light of the publication today of Learning to Learn, does this mean the Minister has given up hope on an early year strategy? No. The very fact that I published a Learning to Learn strategy this morning proves that I have, we have, now have the Department of Education as an early uh, year's strategy. The early year strategy previously published um, what was published in a time which was seen a greater role for health in, in relation to early years and other departments within early years, and the strategy ran into difficulties. We recognised those difficulties. We responded to the consultation responses within that, and I acknowledge the fact that the Department of Education had a key role in its strategy and it needed to put its policies on paper. Learning to Learn does that. It sets out quite clearly how we are going to invest in our preschool education services, how we are going to move forward towards the future. It also acknowledges that through the Executive's Delivering Social Change programme that there is an ideal opportunity there for all the departments to cooperate together and to deliver a an early year strategy for our entire society. So I haven't given up on any of those things. We have put a firm commitment down today in our Learning to Learn strategy, and we will continue to develop close working links with all the other uh, relevant government departments through the developing social change agenda. Adrian McQuillan. Thank you, Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for his answer? What are the implications, Minister, on today's announcement for the funding for such as preschools like Harpers Hill and my own constituency of Corian? Well, congratulate the member on getting his constituency mentioned in the question. It will have no uh, negative financial implications for any preschool setting. Uh, it sets out a programme of policies in terms of curriculum, activities should, that should be taking place in our preschool activities, etc. Et there is no negative funding implications within the Learning to Learn programme. John Dallet. Mr. Dallet. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm sure the Minister for Education would agree with me that one of the most deprived sections of our community in terms of literacy and numeracy are those young people who find themselves uh, behind bars. Given the Criminal Justice Inspections Report of last week, what can the Minister for Education do, perhaps in conjunction with the Minister for Justice, to ensure that these young people are not failed for the second time in their lives? Um, I am aware of this issue, uh, both from being a previous member of the Justice Committee and, indeed, as my role of Education Minister. Uh, the unfortunate truth of the matter is that many of our young people, indeed older people who find themselves in jail, also have a very poor educational record and attainment level. Uh, and that's one of the things I have centred in my policies to correct. In relation to how we move forward with education within our jails, the state, that currently is a matter for the Justice Minister. However, I have met with the Justice Minister to discuss a proposal to move um, 
schooling uh, for our youngest people in, in prisons over to the Department of Education. Those discussions are continuing with my officials. Mr. Speaker, I thank the, the Minister uh, for his answer. The Minister, of course, will be aware that there are excellent uh, examples of good educational practice in McGilligan Prison. What can he as Minister do to ensure that those particular uh, schemes are rolled out in the other prisons, and particularly in Hyde Bank and in the Young Offender Centre, which seems to be a, a centre where it is badly needed but not delivered? Uh, again, I have no responsibility currently in this field. Um, McGilligan Prison is an adult prison, and even if those, those individuals were on the outside of prison, I would have no responsibility for their education uh, beyond the formal age, of, beyond 16, or if they were to stay on to do A-levels, etc. I am aware of, I think it was the Public Accounts Committee published a report in relation to numeracy and literacy, and they used the example of McGilligan. Now, McGilligan appears to be doing good work uh, with, with its inmates, but it's a totally different scenario from a classroom setting, or wherever it may be. But again, I would advise the member to raise those matters with the Justice Minister. Question number five, Mr. Sammy Wilson, not in his place. Dominic Bradley, Mr. Bradley. Um, uh, I'm sure the, the Minister would agree with me that providing high quality uh, developmental opportunities throughout a teacher's career is a key element in raising standards. Uh, in, in our schools here. Can I ask the Minister what lessons he brought back from his recent visit uh, to Canada and the United States in this respect? Um, I, the member uh, will be aware that I was in uh, Toronto and New York last week looking at their education systems. And I found the trip very useful from a number of points of view. One, they are facing similar challenges that we are, perhaps on a larger scale in some areas. Uh, in relation to social deprivation, etc., but they're certainly facing similar challenges to what we are. And particularly in Toronto, they have put in place measures which are similar to our own uh, in relation to raising educational attainment for their young people. And one of the areas they have identified is continuous professional development for, for their teaching staff. Now, we have we received um, significant amounts of information on our visit, and we will analyse those further. But one of the areas where I have to say I did find informative uh, in, in meetings with one of, the, one of the trade union movements was this, that the Toronto government has given the trade union movement a significant amount of money to carry out continuous teacher development. And that's one area I'm going to examine as well. Dominic Brown. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, but considering the recent and the proposed cuts to teacher development, how does the Minister propose to deliver real improvement through continuous professional development? Uh, all areas of our education system have seen cuts to their funding as a direct result of British Government uh, cuts to the Black Grant. Education faced its pressures under that as well, as did continuous professional development. And we have to then work within the resources we have. I believe that the current resources we have still allow us to continue to a program of continuous professional development for our teachers moving forward. Now, I don't stand here and, and argue that the current measures we have in place are the best. We have to continuously improve even our own measures for teacher development, and we will continue to do that, but we will have to do it within the resources we have. Sammy Douglas. Mr. Dickens. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Um, could I ask the Minister, in relation to, uh, added, as at a meeting this morning, all party group on visually impaired and people who are blind, um, what his department will, uh, is actually doing and, and uh, support people like that? Um, each child with a visual impairment has unique needs, and teachers of children with visual impairment provide tailored advice to meet pupils' individual learning needs so that the curriculum can be fully assessed. Where a, part of, where a child with visual impairment Empowerment prevents the child from fully accessing the curriculum. ELBs will address this through the statutory assessment period. Oh, so, sorry, process. Um, thank you, Minister, for his uh, answers uh, thus far. Um, could I ask the Minister, in terms of the, the league table, certainly his own consistency is one I asked, um, and is there some way that he could? carry out some sort of investigation, maybe with some other departments, to find out why is it North Belfast is at the top of the league and also your own constituency as well? Um, the member will appreciate I do not have the details of that information in front of me now. Um, 
I suspect poverty levels may also have play a role uh, within this matter, but the Department does have a very good working relationship with the Royal National Institute for the Blind. ETA carried out an inspection report of the services uh, in 2011, and, and the report came back that the ELBs provided a very good standard of visual impairment support. But in, in regards to the matter raises, the, 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 the matter the member raises me in relation to the constituencies, I will certainly investigate that matter further. Question number eight has been withdrawn. Declan McAleer. Mr. McAleer. Mr. McAleer is also not in his place. Alec Eason. Could I ask the Education Minister, what is the education system doing to help look, uh, helping to, to, to uh, help looked after children? Um, over this last number of years, and, and even in terms of my predecessor, Katrina Rian, we have introduced funding formulas to our uh, schooling system, which identifies looked after children, ensures that there is additional financial support offered to those children through the funding formula, and in terms of services being delivered to schools, whether it is child psychologists or counselling services as well, we are also conscious of the additional needs of looked after children. So we are aware of the additional burdens uh, placed on our uh, looked after children because of the cir circumstances which are not of their doing and which are beyond their control in relation to the barriers that places for their education, and I can assure the member that support is offered uh, to our looked after children in our education system. Do not all looked after children have personal education plans, and if not, why not, considering that they were meant to be implemented by June 2013? All looked after children may not require a, a personal uh, education plan. It is down to the school and the education boards to assess such matters. So, you cannot just simply say that all looked after children will require a, a personal education plan. Let the assessments carry out. Let them assess what is required in relation to each individual child. Questions to the Minister. We now move on to order.